All right, so today we're going to take a look at our first article that will help support um, our claim whether or not we currently live in a dystopian society. The article we're going to start with today is titled Hunger Games Salute Now Banned by Thailand's Military Leaders. Uh, this article is from 2014, but it's still relevant today. So we're going to go ahead and begin first just by reading the entire article um, one time through, and then uh, we'll go back and annotate it uh, together. Start with me in this first paragraph. Life is imitating art in Thailand, or at least imitating a very popular movie. Students there are using a hand gesture from the Hunger Games movies to protest against military leaders now running the country. The Thai army has banned the three-finger salute. Three students in the capital, Bangkok, were arrested in a movie theater showing the Hunger Games Mockingjay Part 1. The students were the latest protesters accused of using a hand gesture from the movie Mockingjay. Excuse me, from the movie. Mockingjay is the newest movie based on the books by Suzanne Collins about teens fighting a dictatorship. Thailand's military took over the government on May 22nd and imposed martial law, cutting back civil liberties and preventing people from protesting. The military said it was necessary to restore order after months of protests. Reading 1984. Thailand has been affected by demonstrations for and against the former Prime Minister Thaksin Shinawatra. Opponents accuse, accused his government of corruption and said it should go. Supporters of the government said it was elected democratically and should stay. Gatherings of five or more people have been banned since the military took over in May. Frustrated by not being able to gather and demand a return to democracy, young protesters are using symbols. Some protesters are reading in public George Orwell's 1984, a novel about dictatorship. Other protesters are raising the salute borrowed from the movies to protest against Thailand's military leaders. Premieres of Mockingjay were canceled at two Bangkok movie theaters. Student organizers had brought up hundreds of tickets, excuse me, had bought up hundreds of tickets. They planned to give tickets away and gather opponents of the military. A colonel with the city's police said the three students arrested were taken to an army camp for attitude adjustment. The Chinese government has also put off the release of Mockingjay in the country's theaters until next year, said the magazine Variety. It wasn't clear if that was because of the movie's popularity with pro-democracy activists. Chinese officials have been dealing with protesters demanding more democracy in Hong Kong for more than a month. Three Finger Salute to Leader in Thailand, five other, students, five other student protesters were arrested for using the three-finger salute. They flashed the sign during a speech by the army's leader, Prayruth Chan Ocha. Prayruth told journalists it only bothered him when the students used the hand sign because it could ruin their future. Prayruth also told reporters that martial law will continue until the time is right to end it. Defenders of human rights criticized the government for banning even symbol protest. These actions are part of a pattern of human rights violations, said Matilda Bogner, a United Nations human rights official. The actions shut down critics and independent voices, she said. Life in Thailand is growing more absurd by the day, John Sifton wrote on a, in a Twitter post. He works for Human Rights Watch. If Prey Ruth's government is that afraid of young people imitating a movie, that's a sign that things need to change, Sifton wrote. All right, so as we get ready to go back over and annotate our article, um, I want to show you a quick video before we get into the actual text that accompanies this article. Here we go. Any of this. I never wanted to be in the games. I just wanted to save my sister and keep PETA alive. Katniss Everdeen is inspiring real life dissent in Thailand. Protesters in the country who oppose a military coup that seized power in May have adopted the Hunger Games protagonist's signature three-finger salute. With the Hunger Games Mockingjay Part 1 opening in Thailand Thursday, protesters have started filling theaters and holding rallies. According to sources, Thai police have detained at least three student protesters who flashed the three-finger salute and some cinema operators in Bangkok are refusing to screen the movie out of fear of political reprisal from the government. Thailand is under martial law, with protests and political gatherings of more than five people banned. 
violators are subject to a military court trial. All right, and then just to give you a sense of where we are talking about, um, here's a map of the world. Thailand is highlighted in red. You can see the United States is off to the left, on the far left. Um, it is an Asian country, and uh, you can see Africa is to the left of that. China is above that, um, and some of those other countries we'll talk about later as we move through the article. So go back with me to your text. But when we get started today, um, I'd like for you to follow along with me. Whatever I write down, you write down. Uh, so your paper should look very similar to mine by the time that we are done. Uh, as we get started, let's take a look. <clears throat> excuse me, as a couple of at a couple of words. First of all, would you underline this word "banned"? And as we look at that word "banned," uh, I just want you to just note next to that that the word "banned" just generally means not allowed. So they are not allowing these students to uh, show this symbol. Additionally, it might just be important to note the date that this was written. Uh, it is. It has been eight years <clears throat> since the um, author published this. Uh, however, some of those instances and some of the um, issues are still happening um, around the world today. Let's drop down to the body of our text and take a look at a few key words that you might need to note just so that you better understand the article. So the first word I want us to look at is this word protest. And if we take a look at the word protest, um, just a quick uh, definition for that can be um, a statement or action that shows you disagree. Now remember, if I'm going too fast for you, you can always pause the video and go back and re-watch. Um, some examples of protests, maybe you've seen them before. Um, people marching in the streets, showing their thoughts and opinions about a certain topic or issue. Um, sometimes protests look like this. Sometimes they are silent. Sometimes people sit in order to protest something. Um, but there's lots of ways that you can show your support or your disagreement for one thing or another. All right, let's go back to our text. The next word that I want us to look at is in our second paragraph. That word is at the bottom here, this dictatorship. All right, and when we talk about a dictatorship, uh, that person or that dictator has absolute authority. It's total. They are the only ones in charge. All right. In the past, we've had some dictators around the world um, that have had absolute authority. This is a picture of um, Mussolini, who was the dictator in Italy, and Adolf Hitler, who was the dictator in Germany during World War II. Uh, these two men had absolute authority over their countries and the people that lived there. All right, let's go back to our article. The next term that I want us to look at um, in this third paragraph is martial law. Now, martial law is important because there's got to be something pretty intense going on in a country in order for martial law to be enforced. This is when the regular law enforcement are unable to um, maintain order and keep the people safe. So I'm going to just draw an arrow down here. I'm going to put this definition down here. So um, martial law is when uh, regular law enforcement excuse me, are unable to maintain order and safety. That's an and sign. All 
Often when we think of martial law, we see images like this, um, where the police and the state police have taken over the, um, the government, or excuse me, the, the city or the, the state or the nation, and um, something has gone terribly wrong so that they are having to come in and, and protect those people. <clears throat> All right, let's go back to that article. Uh, on this page, the last term that I want us to look at is civil liberties. It's over here. All right. And when we talk about civil liberties, um, these are the rights that are protected by law from an unjust government. So I'm going to, um, again, kind of jot this down under here. And this abbreviation, G-O-V apostrophe T, is short for government. All right, let's keep going. Uh, the next section is titled Reading 1984. Um, and as we take a look at that next portion of our uh, text... I would like to show you a quick video that, um, all right, let's take a look at the next section titled Reading 1984. There's a couple other things that we want to jot down or just I want you to be aware of. Um, in this next paragraph, it talks about the Prime Minister of Thailand. I just wanted to show you a picture of what this guy looks like. Um, here he is. This is Prime Minister Thaksin Shinawatra. Um, and he had some people that agreed with him and lots of people that disagreed with him as well. So just to remind ourselves, uh, let's take a look at this next paragraph. And when we talk about things, uh, uh, people that are opponents, if we underline this word here, uh, versus people who are supporters, right? So when we talk about opponents, these would be people who um, disagree with you. And when we talk about supporters, right, that would be the opposite, people who agree with you. And in this case, agreeing with that prime minister and the things that he stands for. Um, in the next paragraph, we start talking about uh, these students and that they are frustrated. And so I just want us to note that these students are frustrated. And the reason that they are frustrated is... Um, excuse me, not the students being frustrated, the military is frustrated and they're frustrated because these young pro protesters are using these symbols. And it's interesting to me that the government and these um, uh, military officials are frustrated by these young people. Um, in our notes on um, dystopian societies, we made reference to George Orwell's book, 1984. And I just wanted to give you a quick synopsis of that book. So here is a quick video to help us better understand. A middle-aged man who lives in Oceania, a collection of countries that form one of the three superpowers in the world. He is stationed in dreary London, working as a clerk for the Ministry of Truth under Big Brother, the overruling party of Oceania. His job is to update all text, like books, newspapers, speeches, etc., to match whatever the party deems as correct. Winston, however, is unhappy. He keeps a secret diary and writes in it frequently, expressing his frustrations with how life is. He takes caution from the Thought Police, a police-like group who use telescreens to view any suspicious activity for potential troublemakers. Then one day at work, Winston notices a dark-haired woman named Julia. She's young and beautiful with a hint of mystery. She slips him a secret note saying that she loves him. The two meet up and engage in a physical and romantic relationship, of course forbidden by Big Brother and the party since intimacy is only for procreation, if that. With the permission of an antique shop owner, the couple use the shop for their secret meetups. The couple even meet with another one of Winston's co-workers and talk about the Brotherhood, a secret resistance organization trying to dismantle Big Brother. However, the whole thing is a setup and Winston and Julia are taken in for questioning. During the interrogation, Winston faces his greatest fear, rats. They put a cage of rats on his head and he begins to panic. 
In terror, he declares that he wishes the punishment be given to Julia instead of him, and he is broken. And in the end, Winston is the shell of a man, broken and sheepish, believing what Big Brother tells him, that 2 plus 2 equals 5. Alright, so let's go back to our article. Now that you have a better understanding of when we reference 1984, um, that this idea of this book talking about, you know, Big Brother's always watching, the government is always keeping an eye on you, um, and totally controlling and changing history in order to better support what they believe to be true. Um, so just to have that kind of in the back of your brain as we continue to look at dystopian societies or this idea of if we currently live in one, that might be something to be thoughtful about. Um, in our next paragraph, it talks about this premiere of Mockingjay and these students bought all these tickets to hand out and some were even arrested. And what I find interesting is that they were taken um, away to a, an army camp for quote unquote an attitude adjustment. Now, what I want you to do here is, um, first of all, let's just note that this is um, a use of that euphemism that we had talked about when we looked at our notes on dystopian societies. And then I want you to take a minute and I want you to think, what do you think uh, this could possibly mean, this attitude adjustment? So right now, if you would... Um, you can jot down in the margins, you can go to the bottom of this document, but I want you to answer this question. What could this quote unquote attitude adjustment mean? Let's zoom in a little bit. What do you think they did to these students that were arrested and taken to this army camp. What could this mean? So if you need to, go ahead and pause the video for a minute and take a minute and answer that question. All right, taking a look, <clears throat> continuing to look at our document, um, one of the things that this, the majority of this document is talking about Thailand. However, it does go in and start talking about the Chinese government. And um, they also put off the release of Mockingjay. Now, something that's interesting to note is how close Thailand and China are to each other. So if we take a look, we've got China here in yellow and Thailand is just below that in green. So these countries are pretty close in proximity to each other. And um, Maybe some of the ideas have bled over from one country to another. Uh, maybe they're both under democracy, or excuse me, under dictatorships that are ruling those countries very stiffly. Um, but it's just something to be mindful of that we're talking about kind of the same general area. Additionally, um, uh, like I said, in this paragraph, it talks about that China put off the release of Mockingjay in their country. Why do you think that they did that? And why do you think that um, they postponed the release of Mockingjay in their country? So again, I want you to uh, take a minute and pause the video and answer this question. Why do you think China put off the release of Mockingjay? I'll jot that down. Why? Do you think China put off the release? Oops. Oops, excuse me. Do you think that they did it just because it was very popular? Do you think that it was because of these pro-democracy activists? Um, do you think that they had some of the similar fears as Thailand did? Why do you think China put off the release of Mockingjay? So again, pause the video and answer that question, please. All right, let's keep going down to this uh, the next section titled three finger salute to the leader. So not only are these students using the salute to show their support for democracy, but they've also used it, um, in a setting where a leader was speaking. So we have, um, the name of this leader is here. It's Prayuth Chan Ocha. 
And just to give you a sense of who this guy is, this is a um, article from the Wall Street Journal. It's a very renowned um, uh, newspaper. And again, here are some uh, documentation. These are these po protesters raising that three-fingered salute in front of this prime minister while he's giving a speech. Uh, these are the five students or some of the five students that were arrested that day and detained um, at that time. So take a look. Some of the interesting things that I find about this section, if we go to the next paragraph, it talks about that the dictator, or the, excuse me, the speaker was not, um, he's the army's leader, and he says he wasn't really bothered by it except for that it could ruin their future, talking about those students. How do you think this could ruin the future of these students. Would you please take a minute again, pause the video, jot down your answer to this. How does um, giving this public display um, of this three-fingered salute um, potentially ruin the future of the students? Uh, additionally, we want to look at some other terms. We have this term titled human rights. or uh, And so something to note about human rights, these are the rights that belong to every person, no matter race, um, their sexual orientation, who they are, uh, male or female, these are rights belonging to every person. All right, so we have those human rights. And then um, just to note and just be mindful of the symbols of protest, that would be that three-fingered salute that they've been talking about. Um, again, they're saying now you've got some people um, talking in favor of these students that uh, giving that three-fingered salute is a um, and them being arrested for it is a violation of their human rights, those rights that belong to every person. Um, she also says that um, it's shutting down their independent voices. Um, additionally, a gentleman named John Sifton uh, posted on Twitter that uh, the life in Thailand is growing more absurd every day. He works for a company called the Human Rights Watch. And again, just to give you some insight on who they are, uh, here's a quick video. Human Rights Watch. Uh, they investigate and report on abuses happening in all corners of the world. They are roughly 450 people of 70 plus nationalities who are country experts, lawyers, journalists, and others who work to protect the most at risk from vulnerable minorities and civilians in wartime to refugees and children in need. There's a video you can view as well as some information about what they do and the work that they're currently do doing around the world. All right, going back to our document and finishing up, uh, in this last paragraph, it uh, gives us some things to think about. It says, if Prey Ruth's government is that afraid of young people imitating a movie, that's a sign that things need to change, Sifton wrote. So the same gentleman, John Sifton, that works for the Human Rights Watch said this. Um, why would the government be afraid of young people? Um, Jot this question down. Again, I'm going to use that abbreviation. Jot that question down and take a quick second just to answer it. And there's no right or wrong, but why do you think that the government would be afraid of young people um, just imitating a movie or standing up for what they believe in? Go ahead and jot that question down and then um, answer, give a quick answer to that. All right, as we finish this article up, uh, there is an assignment attached on Canvas that you need to go in and um, a question you need to answer. Uh, make sure you have that submitted and then you also need to take a picture of your notes that you um, annotated on your document and submit that as well. All right, guys, thanks so much. Have a great day. Bye.